There is this doctor who has the plan to do the world's first ever human head transplant. It's literally what it sounds like. You cut off someone's head who is alive, you would keep the head alive or at least try to, then you put the head on the body of someone else and connect the head to the new body. This way the head of the person has a new body. It's a surgery that needs 150 medical staff and takes 36 hours to finish. The doctor's name is Sergio Canavero and the whole world call him insane for this plan but he still wants to do it. It sounds crazy but the surgery has happened on animals before. Some of them were kind of successful and some of them not that successful and really weird. more on that later. And it almost happened on a human being. Yes, a person agreed to get his head cut off so Canavera could put it on the body of someone else, but decided to back out for an unexpected reason. I will share his unexpected reason in a bit. But how is this possible? Well, allow me to explain. In order to explain this whole operation and the full story, I will answer these questions in this video. First, why do we want a head transplant surgery in the first place? What's the use? What are the benefits? Second, what are the cases of the surgery happening on animals? How did they go and for how long did the animals survive? Third, what happens in the surgery? How would Canavero cut off a human's head and put it on someone else's body without the person dying? And fourth, how did the surgery almost happen on a human? Who was the person who agreed to get his head cut off by Canavero so he could put it on the body of someone else? And what was his unexpected reason for backing out? So let's get started with the first question. Why do a head transplant surgery in the first place? Let's say someone is paralyzed and they can't move their body. They have a terminal disease or they suffer from some sort of muscular atrophy. But they have a healthy head and brain. Now instead of trying to heal the body, which can be impossible sometimes, we can just switch the diseased body with a healthy one. Now in order to do this, we need a healthy body without a head. So how how do we find that? Let's say there is another person who is brain dead, which means that his brain has lost all of its functions and he's technically and legally dead and there is no hope in them coming back. And before this happened, they decided that if something bad happened to them, they would donate their body and their organs. We can cut the head of these two individuals, then put the head of the first person on the healthy body of the second person and connect them together. This way, the first person who has a healthy head and a paralyzed body now has the healthy head and a healthy body, which means that they would be able to walk again. And the second person was even dead before the surgery. But that's how it works in theory. How can we do this in reality? What are the protocols and steps that would enable the doctor doctors to do a head transplant without the patient dying. For a long time, doctors have been looking for that method to be able to do the surgery on humans successfully. And the way that we can find that method is by first experimenting on animals. If we try different methods and find a way to successfully do a head transplant surgery on animals, then maybe we can start to think about doing it on humans. First, I will briefly explain the experiments and the head transplants that happened on animals. Then after that, I will explain the protocol that Dr. Canavero came up with for head transplants transplants on humans by learning from all of these experiments. So what are the examples of the surgery on animals? Which one of them were successful and for how long did the animals stay alive? The first ever case of a head transplant on a living creature happened back in 1908, when two doctors performed the first dog head transplantation. The dog only stayed alive for a few hours. You can look at it in two ways, either say holy shit the animal did not die instantly and stayed alive for a few hours and that's impressive, or you can say what a cruel and useless operation the animal didn't even survive a day, what's even the point? Well, you'll be the judge. Then in 1954, Dr. Vladimir Demikov from the Soviet Union also attempted a dog head transplant. Demikov transplanted the head with the upper body, so the head and the forepaws. Demikov's dog were able to move, see, drink water, but most died within a few days. The longest that any dog survived the surgery was 29 days. In 1965, Robert White, an American neurosurgeon, also attempted a head transplantation. Unlike Demikov, his goal was to do only a head transplant instead of doing an upper body transplant. The dog survived between 6 hours and 2 days. In 1970, White performed the first head transplantation in monkeys. A few hours after the surgery, the monkey monkeys with the new heads were able to do things like chew, swallow food, move their eyes and bite, but the survival only ranged between 6 hours and 36 hours. In 2015, a Chinese surgeon named Dr. Xiaoping Ren performed head transplants on mice. He had better results compared to people before him, more than half of the mice survived for over 24 hours, with the longest survival being 6 months. Back in 2017, Dr. Sergio Canavero, the person that this video is about, claimed that the world's first human head transplant has been performed on a corpse.
A team led by Dr. Xiaoping Ren carried the operation in 18 hours, which successfully connected the spine, nerves, and blood vessels of two dead people. Dr. Canavero, who was working with the team, said that the electrical stimulation of nerves proved that the operation on the corpse has been successful, and the two people had been completely attached. Now let's talk about the details of the surgery, specifically how it's going to be done on a living human. Canavero considered all of this history to develop a protocol that explains how he would successfully do the surgery on an alive human. What is this protocol? Well, let me explain. In this protocol, you would have two surgical teams working simultaneously. The temperature of the recipient's head is brought down to 10 degrees Celsius and the temperature of the spine of the donor is also brought down. Hypothermia brings down the metabolic rate of organs and stops the brain cells from dying. Each patient's neck is carefully prepared by the two surgical teams. Then the team exposes and prepares arteries, veins, muscles, trachea, esophagus, and nerves in the neck. Then in a face down position, the spinal cords are precisely cut with a surgical blade made out of diamond. You need an ultra sharp microsurgical blade for a surgery like this, so you make sure there would be minimal amount of damage to the spine. And Canavero chose a blade made out of diamond. The recipient's head is separated with this ultra sharp blade, promising a clean cut. Then the head is transferred onto the donor's headless body attached with tubes that connect it to the donor's blood circulation. All of this should happen under an hour. Immediately after that, the two spinal cords are fused with a special glue called PEG. PEG or polyethylene glycol is a type of fusogen that has the ability to fuse membranes of cells together. In 2004, a team led by Dr. Richard Bargains treated paraplegic dogs with PEG injections within 72 hours after their spinal cord injury and found that more than half of the treated dogs were able to walk within two weeks of treatment. These are impressive results, but Bargains himself stated that there are significant differences between dog and human spinal cords, and these differences must be addressed before PEG can be used on humans. While while the phase 1 safety trial using PEG on uninjured human volunteers has been successfully completed, further exploration and testing may be needed before PEG can be applied to injured humans. Regardless, Canavero has the plan to use PEG to reconstitute neural membranes after human spinal cord transaction. Then stutters around the joint cord are applied and a second IV injection of PEG is administered after 4-6 to six hours. Like I said before, blood vessels in the head and the donor's body are connected through tubes. These tubes are removed and blood vessels are sewn together to establish direct blood circulation from the donor's body to the recipient's head. The protective covering of the spinal cord is sewn shut. A device to stimulate the spinal cord is attached then the spine is stabilized from the back using a screw and rod system. All the connections including the airway, food passages, and important nerves are established. And at the end, muscles are linked and the skin is sewn up. After the surgery, patient would go into a four-week medically induced coma to allow everything to heal. Canavero hopes that by doing all of this, the surgery would have a high chance of success. And after the four weeks of coma, the patient would wake up with the ability to walk. One huge problem is after an organ transplant, the recipient's immune system might reject a new organ. Organ. The next problem is pain. Assuming that the surgery would be successful and the patient wakes up, he's going to experience a lot of pain. People undergoing head transplant surgery might need long-term help because the muscle that controls breathing may not work well for an unknown amount of time. An issue with vocal cord function might affect communication and self-esteem. In general, there are so many things that could go wrong with the surgery and in my own opinion, the first human head surgery is probably not going to be successful. I don't know, I might be wrong, but the majority of the animals that had a head transplant surgery died within a few days. Some of them stayed alive for a few months, but I don't think that's enough evidence that would indicate the surgery would have long-term or even short-term success. There are so many doctors and scientists that think Canavero is crazy and the thing that he is doing is unethical and he's basically sacrificing a human being for his own medical experiments. Paul Ruth Wolp, who is a bioethicist from Emory University, has argued that intentionally decapitating the head of one person in the hope of transplanting it on the body of another walks a fine line between medical care and murder should the attempt fail. Arthur Kaplan, who is a bioethicist in NYU Medical Center, said they haven't done enough animal studies to persuade anyone that they actually know what they're doing. Dr. Hunt Badger, the president-elect of the American Association for Neurological Surgeons in 2015 said, I would not wish this on anyone. I would not allow anyone to do this to me as there are a lot of things that are worse than death. That's the summary of how the surgery would happen and the problems that can happen. Now let's talk about the time that Canavero almost did the surgery on a living human being. 
Who was this volunteer? Back in 2015, Valery Spiridonov, a disabled Russian software engineer suffering from a muscle wasting condition called the Werding Hoffman disease, volunteered for the surgery. Valery didn't have any problems from the neck up, but he was disabled and couldn't walk. So he signed up for the operation and he hoped that the operation would make him walk. He agreed to get his head cut off and put out another body. Canaver claimed that the operation would have a 90% chance of success. So the surgery was planned to happen and Valery and Dr. Canaver worked together for about two years to make the surgery happen and make sure that it was going to be successful. But after two years, Valery decided to back out. What was his reason for backing out of the surgery? Well, he fell in love with a woman and became a father. In 2017, he married a computer scientist and they had a child together. And his son did not inherit the disease from him. Valery saw this as a miracle since the condition can be inherited. He said, right now I have too much responsibility in front of my family. I cannot do this right now because I cannot leave them without my attention, even for a few months for rehabilitation. Valery said, I never had a vain motivation to become the first head transplant. I gave two years of my life to this project. I will be glad to see it happening with someone else. Valery backed out, but Dr. Canaver did not stop here. Canaver moved his research to China after his home university in Turin canceled his contract. Even without Valery, Canaver claimed he still had a long list of volunteers to choose from for the Surgery. The surgery has not happened yet, but Canaver still has the plan to do it. There are so many problems and things that can go wrong in so many different ways. And all of these problems and concerns are absolutely valid. But let's say there is a 1% chance of success and Canaver does the surgery successfully. He would change science forever and would become the person who led one of the biggest breakthroughs in the medical field. But I don't think that's gonna happen, at least not for the first time.